So I was walking down Rothschild Street in Tel Aviv the other day when I saw this enormous crowd. And I asked people, like, what was going on? And I found out that Prince William was coming to visit during the day. There were hundreds of people lined up to see him. It was 90 degrees, everyone was sweating, and no one even knew when he was coming. So finally, after about an hour, the prince arrived. along with Netta, who won this year's Eurovision contest. But the most interesting thing is that the moment he arrived, everyone left. And the thing is, I don't mean physically leaving, they all stayed, of course. They left in a different kind of way. Every single person pulled out their cell phone and just snapped the photos of Prince Willis. And I mean, like, every single one of them had their phone out. It actually kind of reminded me of that episode from Black Mirror, White Bear where all these people are reporting that woman who's running for her life. I think there's a really interesting social phenomenon taking place, and I want to talk about it from two perspectives. First, from the crowd's perspective, and then second, I think, from the prince and Netta's perspective. Let's start with the crowd, and more specifically, why they wanted to see the prince so badly. Well, it wasn't because the prince was doing anything interesting. He was just walking, like I'm doing now. He wasn't giving a speech, he wasn't performing. I asked two of my coworkers after the event, why do you think people wanted to see him so badly? Because people adore him. They adore him, why? What do you do? Oh. You know, he's a prince. He's a prince. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's, That's all. It. And I think they're right. People are interested in the prince because he's a prince. He's famous for being famous, and that's what's interesting. But then there's the question of why everyone had their phone out. Why do people want a photo of the prince? Yes, it was a somewhat historical moment. It was the first time a member of the British royal family has visited Israel and Palestine. But I don't think people were recording it for historical reasons. There were journalists and news reporters and professional photographers there to do just that. I also don't think that people were taking photos for personal memories. It seems unlikely that anyone's going to look back at the photo they took and think, wow, what a wonderful time I had on this day at this event. I think the real reason people were taking these photos was purely for social reasons. For their friends, for their family, for their social networks. Sharing a photo of the prince does a few things. First, it tells the people you know, hey, I am a person who can get close to the prince. And even if no meaningful interaction took place, it creates the illusion that there was one. Sociologists have a term called social capital, which refers to the collective value of all social networks and the inclinations that arise from these networks to do things for each other. And I think a photo of the prince may make it seem like your social capital is bigger than it actually is. Also, sharing a photo with the prince just gives you attention, and I think it gives you the feeling of being famous, even if only for a moment. Why are so many people interested in fame, and why do so many want to be famous? I think there are a bunch of good reasons that people would want to be famous. The first is that people just admire you and look up to you. Another big thing is that you don't have to constantly impress every single new person you meet. Part of the work is already done for you because people know who you are. And I think one more important point is that your opinion and voice can be heard. However, this is where I want to turn the situation around and look at the event from Prince William and Netta's perspective, two people who I think have more fame than anyone can dream of. At least in this single setting, I think it seems pretty awful to be famous. Both people can't even walk down the street and get a cold drink without being mobbed by hundreds of strangers taking photos of them. But not being able to do things in public isn't the only thing that I think is a negative of fame. Fame puts you in the spotlight for anyone to judge, and strangers on the internet and in paper can say things about you that I don't think they would dare say to your face. A blog I like called The Book of Life puts it well when they say that fame really just means that you get noticed a great deal, not that you get understood, appreciated, or loved. It's ironic that many people who have the fame that everybody else so badly wants actually wish that they didn't have it. Drake, who's currently the number one played artist on Spotify, actually talks about this in his new album Scorpion. In the song Emotionless, Drake raps, Missing out on my years. There's times when I wish I was where I was, back when I used to wish I was here. Missing out on my days, scrolling through life and fishing for praise. Opinions from total strangers take me out of my ways. Jim Carrey also touched upon this idea beautifully when he said, 
I think everybody should get rich and famous and do everything they ever dreamed of so they can see that it's not the answer. However, Drake and Jim Carrey weren't the first to realize how empty fame is. The Stoics, a group of philosophers in ancient Greece and ancient Rome, realized this over 2,000 years ago. Marcus Aurelius, Roman emperor and Stoic philosopher, wrote in Meditations the following. Perhaps the desire of the thing called fame will torment thee. See how soon everything is forgotten, and look at the chaos of infinite time on each side of the present, and the emptiness of applause, and the changeableness and want of judgment in those who pretend to give praise, and the narrowness of the space within which it is circumscribed, and be quiet at last. And be quiet at last indeed, because what the Stoics knew so well is that fame is just straight up silly. The people who love you today may hate you tomorrow, and even if they do love you tomorrow, they'll probably forget about you the next day. And if not them, then their grandchildren or their grandchildren's grandchildren. What the Stoics would say is that instead of seeking fame and praise, you should just focus on doing your best in each present moment. That is where your happiness will come from, not from shallow applause. Oh. It's a video! What's going on? Wow! Ah. Ah. Whoa! Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you want to learn more about the Stoic philosophy, I would highly recommend reading a book called Meditations, which I mentioned, by Marcus Aurelius. It's only about 100 pages long, and I think it might be one of the most important books I've read. But if you do want to save time, I actually have condensed that book down into my favorite quotes from all of the chapters. And that document is only a couple pages long. You could find it in the description below, right down there. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you think about the book or that, and I'll see you next time on Zuck That.